Welcome to the Bivouac. This is the game of Rummy. This is in the Rummy family of games, and your goal in this game is to get the most points in the round. If you're playing a longer game, you'll keep track of those scores and play to a certain agreed-upon value. To play this game, you're going to need one standard deck of 52 cards, no jokers, and we're going to deal each player seven cards. In this example, we're going to have three players. And you're going to keep your hands secret, but for example purposes, we will uh, show them to the world. You're then going to flip over the top card of the draw pile, which is right here in the middle, and that starts the discard pile. Let's say this player goes first. On your turn, you can do one of two things. You can either draw from the draw pile, the top card, and look at it. Or you may draw from the discard pile, and you can choose any card that's part of the discard pile. It will get progressively bigger throughout the game. You must, however, be able to lay the card that you choose as a meld that turn, which can include other parts of the discard pile. Um, and you also must take all the cards that are above it in the card. So, if, for instance, this 8 was the bottom, and there was, whatever, three cards on top of it. You would have to take the 8, and the 8, and the 9, and the 9, and put them all in your hand. Now, you only have to use the 8 that you chose this turn, but you have to put all these other ones in your hand. Which can be a good thing, it also can be a bad thing if the deck is really big, and it's hard to shed all those cards. After you do one of those, you may meld and lay down cards from your hand. So if you have three or more cards from your hand that you can use to start a meld, you can lay them down. This player has no uh, ability to make a meld. In order to make a meld, you need three cards that are either the same number or in ascending order the same suit. For instance, the three of spades, the four of spades, this player needs the five of spades or the two of spades in order to make a meld. In this melding step, you can also lay down attachments. If somebody has laid, or including yourself, a meld on their board, you can attach cards to their meld. So for instance, if somebody laid this 8, 9, 10, okay, this was in front of this guy's board over here. This player, on their turn in the meld step, could attach this jack, because it's one higher than the 10, to this 10, and place it in front of them. It's worth their points, but it's now attached to that 10. And players can lay attachments on attachments, so a player could lay the Queen of Clubs now on this run. This player is going to um, draw a card. So he gets the two of hearts. He doesn't really want the two of hearts, so he's going to immediately discard it. At the end of your turn, you must always discard a card. It can be one of the ones you just pick up, except for the one you chose um, if you drew from the discard pile. And even if you have run out of cards and been able to meld all of your cards on your turn, you still must have a discard. So, you, have, you will be stopped from going out if you do not have a discard. Then once you discard, your turn is over and the next player will begin their turn. The game is over once one player has run out of cards by laying melds out of their hands. Because when you lay a meld, you won't be replacing those cards. At which point, uh, you will tally up score. And score goes as follows. Everything a 2 through a 9, so the single digit number cards, are worth 5 points each. Everything that is a 10 through a king is worth 10 points each. And every ace is worth 15 points if it's played high. And to play it high, you must play it with a king and a queen or you must play it with three aces. So ace, 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 or queen, king, ace would be considered high. But you can also play it low, ace, two, three, but then the ace would only be worth five points. Any cards left in your hand at the end of the game when one player tallies up, uh, runs out of cards, is points counted against you. So for instance, if this player had all these cards left in their hand for whatever reason, they would lose five, 10, I'll skip these 10s later, 15, 20, 25, 35, 45 points from leaving cards in their hand. If you have an ace in this example, the ace is considered high and will be subtracted 15 if it's left in your hand. That is the basic rules for rummy. The only other special rule that is in this game is considered 
rummying to the board or rummy, whatever you want to call it. So if somebody lays a card, let's say we go back to our eight, nine, 10 example, and somebody lays a card that can be used as an attachment. Somebody can call rummy, take the top pile and claim that it's yours and place it in front of their board. And that would be considered points for them. Nothing else happens. The game continues as normal, but that player does get a free card. In the rare circumstance that you want to lay down this card because you have to, or that's your best option, you can lock it down by saying rummy to the board, saying I know this is a playable card, but I don't want anybody else to take it and I need to discard this card. Usually that happens when um, it's your last card and you need to have a discard in order to go out and so you have to you know, choke up one card that could have been worth points. So at the, end of the, at the end of the round, you subtract what's in your hand and you add what's laid down in front of you on your board. You see what the score difference and the game is played to whatever number you agree to. Five, 500 is usually a good number. Uh, and that is the entirety of Rummy. Good luck.